Hey there, in today's video we're going to answer the question, what camera should you use to film your hunts? Stay tuned. The question that I probably get asked most frequently, both on TexasBoner.com and here on my YouTube channel is, what camera should I use to film my hunts? And that's really a difficult question to answer specifically because there's so many different options available and the answer to that will depend on a lot of different factors including um, your skill level, um, your knowledge of, of video and photography and the equipment that you're going to utilize, the end use of what you're going to use the video for, whether it's for production quality or for uploading on YouTube or sharing with your family and friends. And then of course budget is a huge consideration for most of us. But in this video I want to talk a little bit about the different types of cameras that you might consider and the pros and cons of each of those. And I imagine that most of the people watching this video are looking at it from um, the aspect of the entry level. Somebody that just wants to get into filming their hunts and sharing those videos with family and friends or on YouTube. And so we're gonna kinda take a look at it more from that perspective. All right, so one of the questions that I get asked a lot is with regard to action cameras like a GoPro. Um, I really like using a GoPro, but I do recommend you use it as a secondary camera and typically don't recommend it for a primary camera. Now, will it work? Um, yes, it will. I've seen a lot of people here on YouTube that use a GoPro as their primary camera. It does have limitations, however, one of those being um, low light uh, capability. These just aren't gonna work as well. They got a small sensor just not gonna work quite as well in low light situations. And then the other um, biggest drawback is the inability to zoom. Action cameras are designed by nature to get a wide field of view. And when you're using that in a hunting situation, um, if you've got it mounted to your bow or on the tree or somewhere next to you, the things that are up close, you'll be able to see an animal that's 20, 30, 40, even farther yards away um, within sh normal hunting ranges are just gonna be tiny on the, and you're just not gonna get the detail that, uh, that a lot of people are looking for. Okay, so let's take a look at the next category and that's gonna be the DSLR and I'm gonna lump mirrorless into this. So um, DSLR camera you is typically comes with body only. You purchase additional lenses. Um, these can take great quality images. I've had, uh, this was original DSLR camera I bought. It's a Canon 7D. I had it in, I think, 2009, and it's, I've gotten some really good footage with it. Now, the problem with using this for a beginner and for hunting is while you can get great images out of it, it typically requires a considerable amount of user manipulation to get the most out of it. So, all of the different settings that you have on here from your ISO to your shutter speed to your aperture setting, manually focus, zooming in, it requires a lot of manipulation to get uh, good quality footage out of it. And for that reason, it makes it a lot more challenging um, when in a hunting situation when you've got an animal and you're having to reach in front of the camera uh, to make your zoom um, or your focus adjustments. You have to reach on top of the camera to press the, sh the shutter release. Um, change your ISO, change the different settings on there. And so just the complexity of DSLR and, and mirrorless cameras by nature is gonna make it a little bit more challenging to successfully film a hunt. When you're just getting started, I would recommend ease of use. I don't put these in that category. And as such, I probably wouldn't recommend these for a beginner. Now, the advantage that you can get out of these, of course, is it does add some flexibility so that you can use it for both photography and videography. And a lot of people already have a DSLR camera that they may have purchased for their kids, so you can certainly use it. You're just gonna need to spend a little bit more time learning your camera and then also learning how to manipulate it. The additional consideration is budget. So while you can pick up a reasonable camera body um, in the 500 to $1,000 range, that's for body only, you can probably get a cheap lens for a couple hundred dollars, but if you wanna start talking about getting the most out of your camera and most out of your equipment to get low light performance, to get a additional zoom range, to get a wide variety of wide to zoom, you're gonna have probably have to have multiple lenses that are gonna range from 500 to uh, up to several thousand dollars. It starts to become a system that you have to purchase. A lot of people don't factor that in when they're considering their overall budget for cameras. Just make sure if you're gonna go the DSLR or mirrorless route that you do some research and factor in the cost of lenses and all the other accessories that you're gonna need in order to be successful with those type of cameras. In one of my recent videos, I talked about a new camera purchase that I had and I'm gonna kinda of lump this in. It's a point and shoot camera. I'm gonna lump this in with um, a bridge style camera. So basically these are all in one type cameras where um, it's a fixed lens. 
Um, this is a great camera. I really like it. I've done a little bit of a review on it uh, in a previous video. I'll link that up in the corner here. This camera performs pretty well in low light. It's got a one inch sensor, sensor to it. It's got a zoom range of 24 millimeters on the wide end all the way up to 200 millimeters. On its biggest zoom, it shoots 1080, it shoots 4K. So it's got everything that I was looking for in a small compact package, but still um, it's a little bit more difficult to use um, than the next category that we'll talk about. So um, the other addition to this is this is a $1,200 camera. So again, just for this camera fits in your pocket, everything included. Um, it's a great little camera, but you're also going to pay a premium for it. Okay, so that brings me to my recommendation for somebody that's looking for entry level, looking to get started with their uh, with filming their hunts, and that is the consumer camcorder. Um, don't discount these. You can get a really good camera at a very reasonable price. Of course, you can find them anywhere from probably $300 on up to, again, a couple of thousand dollars. Um, but the ease of use, they're lightweight, compact package, everything that you need right here. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of additional accessories for it. And so somebody looking to get started, um, you got enough to think about with shooting and filming and all the other things that go into that. So um, having ease of use, lightweight, not a whole bunch of other additional accessories to, to worry about. A camcorder is going to be a great option. But rather than talking about which specific camera to get, um, let's talk about the features that you might want to look for. And I'll try to talk about them in terms of um, the most to least important features that you that you uh, want to consider. Um, the one thing that I would make sure of is that it's a HD camcorder, so it shoots 1080 resolution. Um, most cameras these days, a lot of cameras, camera manufacturers are really promoting the 4K. Now they're making 6K and even 8K video. Uh, cameras and while those are nice to have I would put 4k uh, at the kind of at the bottom of the list of importance but you do want to make sure that you've got HD quality um, resolution and that it's going to record to either an SD card or to um, some internal memory in the camera this camera right here is a Panasonic uh, VX870 it's a camera that I purchased for my wife several years ago it's a great quality camera. They make a, just a 1080 version. I don't remember exactly what it is, what the model number is. They do make a 1080 version of that camera um, without the 4K and it's considerably cheaper. I would probably recommend that or one of the Sony's or Canon Vixia's as uh, kind of a starting point. So resolution wise, make sure it's 1080 HD. Don't worry about the 4K. All right, so the next most important feature in my mind is how the camera performs in low light. And that can be driven by several different factors. So one of the things you want to look at is, um, the first thing I would say is what is the sensor size? So sensor size is going to range from one over 2.3 um, inch sensor to one inch sensor. Um, again, the DS, some of the DSLRs and mirrorless will have a full frame sensor. <clears throat> and so that's where you start getting better performance in low light, generally speaking. Um, the other is how big of an aperture it goes. So for a camcorder, the aperture that you'll see on a DSLR or mirrorless type camera is typically referred to as the iris. So it's how wide does that, that lens open? How big does the shutter open when, it, when it's open and when it's uh, taking the video? So um, the iris setting is an important consideration. And then also um, in DSLR terms or photography terms, you're gonna look at the ISO, how sensitive is the sensor to light? That's referred to commonly on camcorders as the gain. So can you turn the gain up? Now, of course, the more you increase that sensitivity of the sensor, turn the gain up or turn the ISO up on a, a photography camera, um, you're gonna get more noise or grain um, or deteriorated video, pixelated video. So just keep all those things in mind. Um, take a look and look at reviews, see how the camera you're looking at typically performs in low light. Keeping in mind that a lot of the activity that we see in a hunting situation, whether it's pigs or deer or hogs, are typically going to be in those early morning uh, hours right after dawn or in the last light situations right before dark. So the better your camera performs in low light, obviously the more opportunity you're going to have to capture the footage and capture quality footage uh, with your camera. Third consideration that I would recommend taking a look at is what is the zoom. So typically your camera camcorders are going to have anywhere from a 10x zoom, which is plenty for bow hunting situations. If you're gun hunting or filming animals or shots that are uh, further than most bow hunting situations, say out to 100 yards or even further, you may want to look at a 16x or 20x or even further zoom. Now let's make sure when we're talking zoom that you're looking at optical zoom and not getting so caught up with some of the digital zoom numbers because again in that digital zoom 
scenario, you're going to start talking about pixelization and image deterioration. So take a look at what the optical zoom is. The camera that I'm holding here has a 25x optical zoom. Again, it performs really well for most bow hunting situations and out beyond that um, if, I, if I need it for longer uh, hunting type situations. Another factor that you want to consider and um, typically most camcorders have it is going to be an articulating screen that you can rotate, flip around. Keep in mind that when you're uh, in a hunting situation, whether you're in a ground blind or in a tree stand, you're not looking at the camera directly in front of you. It may be off to the side, maybe up a little higher, down a little bit lower. And so having that flip out screen, that articulating uh, LCD screen that you can look at, flip it around so that you can kind of view it is an important consideration. You can look at it whether it's beside you, you can look at it if it was up higher than what you are, you still have the ability to look at the screen and then uh, below you, wherever the situation is. A lot of the DSLR manufacturers, um, this DSLR does not have an articulating screen. The Sony that I'm filming this with right now has somewhat of an articulating screen and that it flips up and it flips down, but it doesn't flip out or, or around or side to side. So again, that increases the level of difficulty in trying to get um, the quality footage. I think more and more manufacturers for those types of cameras are gonna include a fully articulating screen. And so um, that becomes an additional consideration. Additional important considerations are manual controls. Can you control your shutter speed? Can you control um, the iris setting and the gain setting? Do you have control of manual focus? Um, those are all important considerations that are going to help you get a lot better footage um, and get the most out of your camcorder. Now, one of the most commonly overlooked aspects of filming your hunts and uploading videos to YouTube is actually audio quality. Um, the onboard mic on your camera is important, but um, one of the things that I would make sure is that you have audio inputs, typically a 1 8 inch mic in jack, and I would buy consider buying an external mic whether it's a lav mic that you're going to keep on you or in this instance what I have is a uh, this is a, a Rode Video Micro. There's other different um, shotgun type mics that work that basically you plug these into a mic input and you're going to get a lot better audio quality um, with an external type mic than typically what you're going to get on um, the onboard mic on this which is Broadcasting in all directions is going to pick up a lot of ambient noise, going to pick up a lot of wind noise, it's going to sound a little bit muffled. So um, obviously different cameras are going to have different quality when it comes to that. But if you can get yourself a fairly inexpensive uh, microphone, you, you'll be do definitely doing yourself a service. The other thing that I'll mention is battery life. Typically the batteries that come with cameras are going to be uh, sh short life batteries. Um, so you probably do need to invest in a couple of extra batteries. Um, Check to see if your battery can charge by USB. A lot of times, most of the cameras that I have now, including this one, including my mirrorless, um, allow, have a USB charge port. And so I can carry a portable battery pack with me, plug that in and get extra life out of the battery. Um, but again, make sure you buy an extended life battery or two or more. Um, that way you always have one charged and you're not gonna miss your hunt because your battery exhausted. There's one other feature that I wanna mention and the difficulty is ranking it and the level of importance, um, and that is the frame rate that the camera shoots. So cameras will shoot in different frame rates, whether it's 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 on up to 120, 240, maybe even higher. And basically what the frame rate is gonna allow you to do is get a super smooth, slow motion. Um, and so the importance of that is gonna vary by your shooting style. I personally like my cameras to have at least 60 if not 120 frames per second so that I can get that nice smooth slow-mo. Um, just keep in mind without getting too technical in this discussion, I'll try to do a separate video on that later, that the higher the frame rate you shoot, the higher the shutter speed is going to require to accommodate that and of course that's going to um, cause your low light performance to suffer. So typically you want to look at a camera that's going to shoot probably either 24 frames per second or 30 and I think most cameras will shoot one or the other if not both but depending on how important slow motion is to you that's another factor to consider is does it shoot 60 frames per second or 120 or even higher all right so real quickly let's talk about some of the other things that you'll need to get started filming your hunts um, right away um, the first obviously is some sort of a tripod camera stabilization uh, if you're going to be hunting ground blinds and you're going to want a tripod of course if you're hunting from a tree stand you want some sort of a camera arm um, different camera arms are available. There um, can be a little bit difficult to find good ones and inexpensive ones. This is made by Muddy 
and I believe it's about $100 is what I picked this one up for. I have a little bit heavier one that I can use for larger cameras. All right, so again, this wasn't designed to, to recommend a specific cameras um, as far as brand goes. Um, I, Canon makes quality video cameras. Sony makes quality video cameras. Panasonic makes quality video cameras. Number of different options out there. Typically, those are the three that I've looked at in the past. Um, I typically stick with Sony or the Panasonics. They typically lead the market in coming up with consumer cameras. Also, depending on what your budget is, don't be afraid to take a look at um, good used equipment, good gently used equipment um, in terms of, of the cameras that you're using. All right, so once again, we just barely scratched the surface when it comes to all the technical aspects of different cameras. I just wanted to hopefully give you some ideas of the, some things to consider when making a camera purchase or going out and acquiring a camera. Um, let me know in the comments section below if you found this video useful, if there's other things that you think are a priority when considering a camera purchase. And also I'd be interested to see the videos that you're creating. I know there's a lot of folks out there that are video in their hunts and just now getting started. So leave a link to those in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate all the feedback and the comments that you provide. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.